All right, so one good use for using a repeat trigger is checking out ignition. So uh, like we said, we've used mic settings. We've got one microsecond. Now I'm gonna use a, a probe like this and I'm just gonna put it on top of the coil. And you see how that dude just jumps around, jumps around, you can't really see it. So we come up here to trigger and uh, we do a repeating trigger on we're on a and we'll put him out here somewhere where we know it'll get it see now you can kind of see that secondary ignition and if you wanted to come up here and change your time base a little bit you know to make it a little wider or make it a little narrower um, that's kind of cool Or, and notice I have the wand here it's still on the screen because it's waiting for something to trigger on this is not a pico thing this is just a scope thing so let's see if we move our trigger over a little bit let's see if we can get two events so the scope is still running I'm just gonna put the wand back on the probe I mean on the coil trying to do this left-handed oh, there you go so there's three events on the screen right now but that's one good thing about using the repeat trigger this video I want to talk about triggering and I want to talk about pros and cons of using a trigger um, all the triggers we're going to use through this whole video can be found here if you open this up you have uh, none, auto, repeat, and single. And under certain conditions, there'll be another one that says rapid. Uh, won't be using that one for this video. Uh, the, vi the trigger that I'm going to be showing you is the simple edge trigger. It's probably the most commonly used trigger. As you use the scope more and more and more, um, there are more advanced style triggers. I have actually have a video out... I think it's called I'm getting triggered where I use the pulse width to uh, look at uh, timing chain and possible slack in a timing chain you have to check that video out um, we're gonna ID what channel we want to trigger we're gonna use C pre-trigger is you can use the plus and the minus and what it does is it moves the yellow dot this way or this way Threshold, you can also use the plus or minus, and basically what it does is it moves the yellow dot up and down, and then you could change whether you want it to trigger on the rising edge of a signal, like say if it's going up, or the falling edge if it's going down. These options are going to be the same uh, no matter what trigger you use. So what I was going to show you is let's just say you've got your scope hooked up and you're certain that you've done everything correctly and you can't get a line on the screen you've double checked you've triple checked all of your connections and you're like what in the world is going on the reason I tell new scope users your first once you get your sample right figured out your goal is to get lines on the screen and to me the best way to do that is to take all triggers off when this thing right now for example is not drawing a line because the trigger point isn't right this is not a pico thing this is the way all scopes work i have used many different scopes over the years and basically if you set your trigger point out of the threshold that the signal is going to make then it's simply not going to work it's not going to trigger you're asking it to do something that it hasn't seen yet so if you're looking at a signal that you have no idea what it's going to look like or the voltage it's going to be in then there's no sense in having a trigger so you could see the scopes running I have the trigger point set in the wrong spot 
so therefore it's not drawing a line. So what I would simply do, starting out, is I would turn the trigger off. Now you got lines on the screen. Now you can make adjustments. You say, okay, now if I set my trigger point to a repeat and I put it down here, it'll, it'll see it and it'll draw the line for me. Um, like I said, this is not exclusive to Pico. This is just the way the triggers work. So the, the first video you saw was using a repeat trigger with an ignition waveform. I, I knew where the ignition waveform was going to fall in, so the trigger was very beneficial. You could see that one signal very clearly. So that was the repeat trigger. The video that I'm going to come up with next, or the one you're going to see next, is where I've used a guided test. Let's say I want to check a fuel injector, and you'll see this in the next little video clip. But I'm not sure how to hook it up, so I'm going to use the guided test. And let's see, a, guy, a fuel injector is an actuator, so we're just going to pick which one we want. We want gas, and we're going to be using a multi-port, and we're going to be looking at voltage. And we're going to accept these terms. If you hit God in settings, it's going to give you a nice little spiel on how to hook it up, give you some warnings. Um, very good information here. And then, um, there we go. If you have a perfectly good working fuel injector on your car, on your car, and you use this guided test, it is going to draw you a beautiful picture of a fuel injector, just like what you see on that screen. The software has picked an auto trigger. It is using a simple edge, and it is set it according to that. Um, the sample rate is uh, very fast. That is a very small hole in the net. If you watched my first video, you will know what I'm talking about there. I, I don't use the auto features on anything. Um, by all means, use it if you need it. Um, but once you get used to using your scope and seeing signals, lots and lots of signals, you probably will steer away from the auto stuff, and you probably won't even need the guided tests anymore. Two examples I'm going to show you. One you're going to see in a video, if you're messing around with an intermittent problem and you have a trigger, it could cause you some problems. And two, they have this trigger point set up for you right at zero. If this injector had some sort of resistance to ground and wasn't fully coming to zero and say it was 200 millivolts, I don't know if this thing would draw you a line on auto trigger. I know if it were repeat or single trigger, it would not draw you a line. So you could there again be frustrated, why will this thing not draw a line? I would say if you absolutely have to, use the guided tests, do everything it tells you, and then reach up here and just turn the trigger off. It's still going to put a line on your screen with no trigger and then you would be able to trigger it as needed so the next two little video clips are going to demonstrate you know like a little intermittent type problem using the trigger pros and cons so um, check those out and then the last video is going to be using a simple or a single trigger which is um, pretty cool and I'll show you a nice way to use that so hang on so I'm using the guided component test for checking a tune port injector it automatically sets up a trigger for you if you're looking for an intermittent you got to be careful using a trigger because watch how watch the delay when I unplug this that wasn't that bad see the delay so if you were wiggling harnesses looking for this injector to drop out you better be careful using the trigger I'll show you a little better way using mic settings of how to find an intermittent. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. That was a big delay. All right, stay tuned. All right, so now we've got more time on the screen and we have no trigger. 
and out and if I start moving this wire here you can see if you're looking for intermittence don't use the trigger put a lot of time on the screen we're not really looking for sample rate but we're, we want a lot of time so we can actually see the fault when it's happening now I'm going to show you something cool of how to use a trigger that'll really help you so the next little video clip you're going to see is in the shop I'm using a single trigger and doing a relative compression test basically we're looking at starter current to kind of judge the mechanical condition of our engine you can either set it up yourself using a single trigger and what that does is it will do it'll draw one line just like this and then when it gets to the end of the screen it's going to stop so you would put your amp clamp on say channel A and your sink on channel B and then you would sink off of your current and I would set set the trigger point about 100 amps or so because you know the the starter will pull at least 100 amps um, to get itself going the guided test does an excellent job of showing you this and where you'll find that is under starting and charging I'll go to starting relative compression gas if you want you want to show the uh, setup here you use your high amp clamp you can use the positive or the negative um, the orientation of the clamp does matter you want for ease of use you'd want the inrush of current going upward so you can either use the software to invert it if you have it backwards or you can just flip the clamp over and and redo it you have options there um, but the setup is beautiful they have 500 milliseconds of division they're using the single trigger here they've set it on the rising edge and they've put it at about 100 amps the only thing I would add to this is I would use a sink on B and then if you have a sink and then you know the firing order of the engine if you do have a low pulse you'll be able to ID what cylinder it is um, after the little video in the shop if you stick around I'll actually show you a capture of a six cylinder I believe it was a Z that had a valve sealing issue and how that looks how the scope sees it through the eyes of the starter with low compression on a cylinder it's pretty cool this is a very valuable test um, I wouldn't you know, hang my entire diagnosis on this test but man it is a pretty good size piece to the puzzle if you're uh, narrowing down some sort of an engine roughness or a misfire so stay tuned for uh, the little Pico capture and I appreciate you guys watching now I have a single use trigger and I'm going to trigger off the current here because we're going to do a relative compression test so I'm going to set my trigger point up to about right there and what it'll do is while it's cranking it's going to record one screen and then stop and then we can make decisions what to do with the capture so hang on So as you can see, the trigger stopped me here. We have our sink on number four. So now we can use the uh, the peaks of the starter to count our compression humps. It's it's an easy way to kind of give a quick test of the mechanical parts of the engine, especially when three of the spark plugs are under the intake back here. But uh, appreciate you guys watching, and um, if you need any Pico stuff give these guys a shout there's always a link in my description box have a good one here's an example of a six cylinder engine with low compression on one of the cylinders I have a sink on number one and each one of these peaks right here is a cylinder coming up on compression this is also kind of a crude way to look at ignition timing peak of the amperage and then the uh, spark event will kind of tell you it's firing in the right spot um, if this thing was way over here you know obviously it'd be late 
But if the firing order is one, two, three, four, five, six, and then repeats, we can see throughout this whole capture that the that the signal or the hump after the ignition sink is a bit lower and it repeats. The main thing is you see it repeat over and over and over. And this would be a good time to show you a little bit of filter. So if you wanted to filter this thing down a little bit, you would come over here and you would just turn it on. And then you can add and subtract filter. Now be careful, you can filter out too many details. So, um, of course, there's not a lot of detail in this particular capture, but be real careful using detail, especially if you're messing with ignition. Um, but you can see this hump is lower every time. And that is just one cool way to use the scope and electrically see a mechanical problem within an engine. Now, what this does is this gives me direction. I know which cylinder it is. Now I need to pursue that cylinder more. This is not hang the old diagnosis, all oh, this thing needs an engine. This one needed a valve job. Um, but there could be circumstances where you have a hole in the piston or rings leaking or, you know, you could have a cylinder wash. You could have an injector leaking and you do this test and you got low compression. Um, it, you know, especially with today's fuel injectors, um, you could have a wash cylinder and get a reading similar to this. But this is just one more tool in the toolbox. And like everything with scopes, the more you do this, the more you'll get used to seeing anomalies. One anomaly is every time you have a low one, or every time I've seen a low one, the compression peak after it is generally the tallest one. Um, there's some logic behind that, but I'm not going to get into it too much in this video. So use the scope, use relative compression. If you got any sort of a misfire, like I said, you don't even really have to get your hands dirty to do this test, and it gives you a lot of info. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, share this. Hit me up on Facebook, um, on the YouTube if you want different topics uh, gone over. Um, and don't forget Auto Nerds. If you guys start wanting to buy your own scopes and this and that, please check out Auto Nerds. The links are always in my description box. Have a good one.